Hi, James, you're on mute. Thanks so much, everyone. Okay. Okay. All righty. Hi, I'm James Woolley, the Executive Director of Frameline, and I'd like to welcome you to our program preview, a short run through of many of the films in Frameline 44, screening September 17 to 27. So that's starting this Thursday. In this chat, you'll hear from our programmers, see some short trailers, and also meet the filmmakers from our drive-in centerpiece, Shit and Champagne. But first, I wanted to tell you about a few late edition programs we've announced. First up is Boys in the Band. It's, our, it's the first conversation Netflix are doing with this really great new adaptation of that uh, film and play. And it's really, really great conversation we've got. So join us on the 22nd. We've also got Out, which is Pixar's cute little film, uh, which represents the LGBTQ plus community so well. We've got an exclusive talk with the filmmakers as well as screening the short film. You can join us for that on the 26th. I also wanted to give a shout out to the Frameline 44 Gala, which is coming up also on the 26th, hosted by Michelle Miao. It includes auction items from John Waters, it includes auction items from Alan Cumming and more. You can bid from those items on from Thursday and the live gala itself will take place on the 26th. So help support Frameline through this wild and crazy year. And I'd like you to hear from all of our programmers in this show. But first, let's sit back and get in the fun times mood. Darcy Jollinger from Shit and Champagne, but also from Frameline's usual launch venue, Oasis, is going to make us a delicious cocktail. Oh, hi there. So we're having some uh, technical difficulties. So I'm going to take over until we get back to the amazing cocktail video. My name is Paul Struthers, and I'm Frameline's Director of Exhibition and Programming. And welcome to Frameline 44. First off, I'd like to say what a challenging year it has been. And we at Frameline send you and your loved ones all our love. Tonight, myself and the programming team will go over some of the films. Sadly, we can't mention every film, so I urge you to check out frameline.org to see the full amazing program. Before I mention my first film, a massive thank you to all on the programming team and all on the screen committee. Your work has been amazing. Thanks so much. Okay, my first film is no Hard Feelings, directed by Faraz Sharat. The film won the Teddy Awards at this year's Berlin Film Festival. This award, the greatest queer film prize there is. When Parvis meets Amon, a newly arrived Iranian immigrant living in a German shelter with his sister, the trio become immediately inseparable, barreling through the night till morning, finding in each other the home they've been lacking. Don't miss, no hard feelings, and the performances are outstanding. Arabi? No, Iran Yasta. Mind just the audio. Has that switched me out? No.
Okay. My second film is Unapologetic, directed by Ashley O'Shea, an important documentary in the Frameline 44 program. Seen through the eyes of two black queer women organizers, aspiring social worker Janae and Westside artist and raptivist Bella, Unapologetic is a film that we need and is about black girl magic, offering a lyrical and urgent portrait of the Black Lives Matter movement in Chicago. Four years in the making, director Ashley O'Shea paints a distinct timeline of activism in the face of adversity in the Midwestern city. Other films that highlight the urgency of Black Lives Matter are Festival Faves, The Picture of Tunde Johnson, and Peer Kids. Okay, my last film before you meet the rest of the programming team is a short film. Please do check out one of the eight shorts programs we have. One is even free. This film is part of our animation shorts program. A massive thanks to my partner, Josh, for programming it. Kapai Mahu, is directed by the directors and lead subject of much loved Frameline alum film, Kumahina. Kapai Mahu reveals the healing power of four mysterious stones on Waikiki Beach and the legendary transgender spirits within them. The film brings this powerful legend back to life in vivid animation, seen through the eyes of a curious child. Thanks, Paul, for sharing those clips. My name is Dominique O'Neill, and I'm the Programming and Hospitality Manager for Frameline 44. And tonight, I will also be one of your lesbian cruise ship directors. There's so many great films from Frameline 44 that the programming team put together, and I am so happy to point out a couple that we love, including the Frameline Completion Grant awardee, Ellie and Abby, and Ellie's Dead Aunt. The charming coming of age tale out of Australia, a teen rom-com about a young woman coming out and getting a little help from her dead aunt. Here's the trailer. Coming out is hard and I have been sent here to help you through it. What about grandchildren? Oh, come on, shut up. Here is a list of conversation topics. We're making this a big deal and it's no big deal. What is on this note? I, it, well, can't, I, it's, don't be such a no. I'm putting it out into the universe that I did not just like a post from six months ago. <sighs> the use of this hat is twofold as it's uh, in addition to my cruise director duties, it's also my personal homage to Aaron Daniels who played Dana in The L Word. Um, no spoilers, but a lot of us didn't get enough of her in that series. So I'm happy to inform you all that she's one of the leads in Amy Glazer's Beautiful Dreamer. The film also stars Louis Ozawa Cheng Chen, Catherine Smith McGlenn, and the always fabulous Wendy Malick. And it's a local production set in San Francisco and the East Bay. And if you get your kicks from local flicks, make sure to check out Ahead of the Curve and Chosen Family. Uh, but for now, here's the trailer for Beautiful Dreamer and enjoy. We're pregnant. Oh my God, that's great. Congratulations. Thank you. How far along? 32 weeks. Wait, eight months? Which is the other thing, we got a surrogate. I, I kissed your girlfriend. Excuse me? It just happened and I feel like this is the best time to tell you. I knew you wouldn't tell her. You knew? I'm just here to do this job. I'm not anything else. 
Hello, Internet audience. My name is Sam Berliner, and I'm one of the programmers with Frameline 44. I'm here to tell you about two phenomenal transgender films that we have at the festival this year. Uh, the first film is Rurangi. It's New Zealand's first transgender drama series turned feature film. It's about a F2M activist who returns home to his small town after 10 years away and realizes he's bitten off a little more than he can chew. With a gorgeous cast and a dedication by the entire filmmaking team to the hashtag by us and about us, the team has trans and indigenous people in front of and behind the camera. And that means that they're mentoring not only about filmmaking, but also about gender. And the authenticity is palpable. Check out the trailer. I think I get it. Like, gender, it's complicated. Me, I'm Kaz now. Holy fuck! Holy shit! We're never exactly girly. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, nah. <laughs> but, I mean, your mum tried. This your mum. You tell her. That's what I liked about you. Or one of the things. Uh, the second film that I'm going to talk about is called Alice Jr. It's a vibrant coming-of-age film pr from Brazil that fiercely turns trans tropes on their head with a dash of sparkles and a pinch of superpowers. When her dad is transferred for work, Alice is pulled out of her social world and plopped down in a small rural town that is less than understanding about her being trans. Starting with just a handful of friends, Alice overcomes the negative trans tropes that are thrown at her in the most colorful, unique ways. She's almost like her own superhero. Check it out. Dizem que não importa o quão longe estamos, somos sempre responsáveis por levar felicidade dentro da gente para onde quer que a gente vá. Thanks, Sam. Hello to all you fabulous Frameline supporters. I'm Mariana Lopez, Membership and Development Manager and Programmer at Frameline. I'm going to talk about two of the wonderful lesbian films in this year's lineup. The first film I want to share with you is Through the Glass Darkly. In Lauren Fash's impressive narrative directorial debut, we are introduced to Charlie, played by Robin Lively, a woman struggling to cope with reality after her young daughter's sudden disappearance. This is Robin Lively of Teen Witch and Twin Peaks fame like you've never seen her before. Michael Trucco and Shinola Hampton round out the rich supporting cast in this smartly woven psychological thriller having its world premiere at Frameline 44. I believe you when you say that these cases are connected and that there's some sort of conspiracy going on in this town. I think you're right and I can help. Why would you do that? because I'm tired of men doing fucked up shit and getting away with it. Oh, so that's it. You're just on a little crusade. Aren't you? We both want the same thing. The truth about what happened. My second highlight is the sweet coming of age German film, Cocoon. Shy, 14-year-old Nora is about to have a summer that will change her life. Preferring the company of her caterpillar collection and her own internal world, Nora's comfort zone is tested when tomboy Romy takes an interest in her. Premiering earlier this year at the Berlin International Film Festival, Leonie Krippendorf's delightfully bittersweet film set in the sweltering heat of Berlin takes us along on Nora's journey from naive child to older and wiser young adult. This is Cocoon. Ich finde andere Mädchen manchmal so schön. Ich finde es auch schön, wenn ich den Körper von einem anderen Mädchen spüre. Du bist 14, Nora. Da hat man so viele unterschiedliche Gefühle. Wie ist die Neue aus der Nachbarsklasse? Die heißt Romy oder so.
Hey everyone, I'm Peter Stein and I'm Senior Programmer for Frameline 44. Welcome, I'm so glad you joined us for the sneak preview. Hey, this is my seventh festival at Frameline and my third working with the incomparable Paul Struthers. And before giving you my little picks for the festival, I just wanna thank Paul for being a fabulous colleague, a tireless champion of virtuous programming and a true friend. I will miss you and Frameline will miss you. Now, on to my picks, uh, I wanna highlight two gems in the festival that I'd love you not to miss. The first is a riveting documentary, which even though it's set in the 70s and the 80s, could not be more timely right now because it is about how a pandemic created a scapegoat. The documentary in its West Coast premiere here at Frameline is called Killing Patient Zero. It's an eye-opening investigation of how one Canadian flight attendant, Gaetan Nuga, became vilified as the monster who brought AIDS to North America. Here's a quick peek. The 70s were just fabulous. You know, not only was all the sex. All through the 70s, sex was kind of the gay man's obligation. We thought that sex was good for you. Like kale. I got very clearly, I think, that... Uh, Gaetan liked having encounters that were no responsibility. Gaetan actually told me that. He had a project of having sex with a different man every night. You know, it's very easy to fall into the hedonistic side because it's intoxicating, but there was a price to pay, I think, for that. Now, in addition to introducing us to the real Gaetan Dugas and giving him a human face, this film also addresses the complicated role played by San Francisco journalist Randy Schiltz in bringing national attention to the epidemic but also popularizing the problematic notion of patient zero. Now, onto a much different note, the sexiest and most inventive drama of the festival has to be Dry Wind, a wild ride from Brazil that takes us inside the fantasy world and the real life love troubles of Sandro, a factory worker with a vivid imagination. I like to call it uh, the secret life of Walter Mitty meets Tom of Finland. Have a look. Você conhece um homem chamado Ricardo Cardoso? Não. O que é isso, Ramon? Ele quer que o moço abra a mochila. Tá bem que é controlar o Michael demais, sabe? Vem que ele sai, aonde ele vai. Excellent. Thanks to all of our programmers. All the films look so good. And just a reminder, the tickets are on sale now. I'd like to take this moment to thank our premier sponsors, Gilead, Bank of America, Showtime, Monica, Hilton San Francisco Union Square, and Alaska Airlines. But this show isn't over. We're going to see the trailer for our drive-in centerpiece, Shit and Champagne, followed by a quick chat with our writer, director, producer, star, Darcy Drollinger, and star Michael Canary. Let's meet them now. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's star attraction, Miss Champagne White! Girl, when you dance, nobody can see straight. Oh, God. Sex, drugs, Dixie Stampede. It's not a haiku. Champagne! I'm sorry, darling, that was a bad <laughs> Booty bumps are reaching epidemic proportions! And there's no way to stop it. Don't worry, this pussy's got teeth. They sent me up from maintenance to unclog your chimney. I know I'm only your adopted half-stepsister, but I'm also your roommate and your best friend. Now what's your full legal name? Champagne? What about the ass candy? Where's the lab set up? Horowitz? Now what's in your pants? God, you shit yourself. Jones. We're not done with the investigation. You were done the moment you walked through this door. Dickerson. Living a life without perfect calves isn't a life at all. White. <laughs> so I've been married a couple of times. It's none of your fucking business. If that information falls into the wrong hands, then this gravy train's going down faster than the goddamn Titanic. Science, after all, is the name of the game. 
I most definitely concur. <laughs> Welcome to the Mallwort family. My name is Janus. Who knows what could happen? Did you? Hi, Hi everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Darcy. Lousy stripper. Yeah, did you just call me a lousy I stripper? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Darcy Drollinger, and um, this is Manuel Canary, Hi. and we're here on the stage at Oasis. And I'm we're, yes, cheers. Cheers to Frame um, Line. Mm. <laughs> Actually, we're so excited to be part of a friend of mine this year and super excited to be at a drive-in movie theater. It's a uh, sort of appropriate anything for I mean, it's a 70s Perfect. movie. Um, this has been a really interesting uh, journey to get here. This um, originally started as a play in New York and it ran for nine months there. It had um, two runs in uh, San Francisco and right yes, it was the very first show at the Oasis. Now you you saw the show mm -hmm. as an audience member. You did um, uh, fill in once for the detective, right? Yeah, but in the second, was, in the second, uh, in the sequel. And then um, you, and Manny, and Manny's worked with me in many other um, plays on yeah. stage, including the Golden Girls mm -hmm. and many other things. And it was great to get you um, oh, on screen. A huge thrill, a huge thrill, thank you. But it was a challenge, don't you think? Like trying to get the mm -hmm. the over the top sort of um, the body campness to translate to, to translate screen. to film. Yeah, and I remember early on you told us that in rehearsals, we'll rehearse a little bit before the film that uh, that we had to bring it down a little bit for film, but that we still had to have a little bit of that, like he's mentioned Mel Brooks kind of style to it. So it was kind of a, a fine line. It, it wow. was, it mm -hmm. was, and I, I remember, I remember, um, I think maybe it was the third or fourth day. Someone said, you know, you can whisper. They can hear you. I'm so used to screaming <laughs> yeah. my lines. Um, but it was also, you know, I think it's what's interesting is, you know, playing with the sort of vaudeville mm -hmm. type of um, uh, comedy, the slapstick that was sort of, you know, it was pretty big in the 70s. You had Mel Brooks, you had the Zucker Brothers, you know, um, Naked Gun, mm -hmm. Airplane, those kinds of things. And then it sort of, it sort of died out, like that yeah. style wasn't happening. And, and I've noticed that doing these type, types of shows live on stage, it just really resonates with people. It is this kind of ridiculous, like, you know, it's, it's high, high camp in that kind of, um, uh, yeah. in, in that slapstick. And, and people, people want it. People yeah, want well, it. you've captured both the, those that comedy from the 70s, but also what those exploitation films that, things like Jackie Brown and things from American International Pictures. You captured both those things and brought, are bringing them back. But let's talk about like us fighting, right? We had, we had a really a intense huge fight scene fight in a bathroom. Scene, <laughs> in the bathroom and, and we thought we were gonna have this really silly fight scene mm -hmm. like we had on stage. Mm -hmm. and, but, we, but I really wanted it to be almost a Tarantino type of moment in the film where you've gone from yeah. you know, drag queen comedy you know, wacky hijinks into this uh, intense fight scene. And I think both of us were sort of caught off guard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, being told to be, it had to look realistic. So the punches and the and, throws and, and had it, to be all real. And it was, <laughs> we screamed a lot at each other. Yes. But yes. I was so exhausted by the yeah. end of the day. A 14 hour day. Yeah. So, and, and it's also, I mean, it's a great scene. It is a great scene. <laughs> but sadly, it's interesting too, what, what works on stage and what works on film. Like with the things that got, I mean, Basically, I cut probably 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, a director's cut. So there will be a director's <laughs> cut, I promise. So anyway, um, I, I'm so glad that you got to come and um, chat with so me. I'm so glad that I'm here with you. Thank and you. And I'm so glad for the opportunity. It's a great movie, you guys. Johnny, Johnny the Gun is, yeah. is amazing. I, I and hope. I feel um, very lucky that we have uh, um, been uh, able to be in an actual sort of um, theater to watch yeah, it. Yeah, no, you know, it's exciting, so. it's exciting. We're bringing a little comedy to some of the serious things that Frameline does, so. Yeah. So here's, cheers. Cheers, cheers to Frameline, thank you. Thank you, Darcy and Manuel. And tickets to Shoot and Champagne are still on sale, although it's selling very, very well. It's at the drive-in this Thursday. Please join us there. Thank you so much for watching this preview show. We're gonna end the night with a debut of Frameline's exclusive new trailer made by HP Mendoza. There's nobody else like him, we love him. 
Enjoy and see you all at the festival.